The team is out on the spooky bayous of Louisiana following up with witnesses, but this one is special. He claims he clearly saw a female Sasquatch. She just kinda throwed her head up and she turned, and when she looked at me, she went, whew. And when she did, I just stepped out to let her know that I wasn't scared of her. I ain't coming to you, but you don't come to me either. <laughs> and then she walked all the way across the field. She turned back around, and when she did, she hollered. Can you imitate it, or would you imitate it? Yeah, she went. tail was a female on cow. The shoulders and the hips about the same. It had a lot of muscles in the neck and stuff. When you heard her do that scream that you did for us, have you heard that noise here before? A since? bunch. <laughs> I think it's, it's more than just one. Dan, I'm curious about how heavy this thing is. I want to just try to see if I can move it at all. Oh, go ahead. I know there's no way I can match the strength of a squatch, even a female one. But I gotta see, like, how does this trailer feel? Like, how much could I move it? Oh, mad one, pig! So I give it some good shaking. I could, I could get a little side-to-side -side rock just a teeny bit, but there's no way I could even budge it the slightest bit off the ground. There's no shame in being out-muscled by a female squat. She was way bigger than me. Hey, I got beat up by a Samoan chick in high school, so I'm used to it. With Bobo standing right there, you know, the top of his head, how big was the figure you saw that night? See that ridge just crossed the top of her? Hit it by here in the mouth. So the top of the head would be up here, Ben? The top yeah, of the head? By, by where your hand is, it'd be the top of his head. Well, that's a good seven and a half foot. Yep. How about for the size of the back? She was about an inch wider. On each side? Yeah, probably like that. OK. Man, you really had a good look at this thing. Look at Bobo when he comes and looks at you. Creepy, yeah, right? I mean, you, well, yeah, he's a little bit more scared. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Bobs? I think Bobo's strong. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, man. I'm super jealous of that setting. That's great. No matter what you see, until you really see something, you don't know or you don't believe. Ben is right, seeing is believing. And since I've never seen a Sasquatch, I honestly don't believe. Despite that, Ben is a credible witness. His account was very detailed, and I would never accuse him of lying. But the fact still remains that anecdotal and so-called expert testimony is the weakest form of evidence. What I need is irrevocable scientific evidence. I'm not only envious of the sighting, I'm envious of the property. You are surrounded by miles of woods and basically nothing else. This is a great location. I'm really jealous. I mean, I've seen enough to know they're real, but I've never had a great sighting like that. I'm just living for that. I'm so jealous. What I got to say, welcome to the Bigfoot Witness Club. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I got to go on a solo camping trip here to get deep into this swamp along Caddo Lake. There's a few areas of activity around Caddo Lake on both ends, at the headwaters and then down at the drainage. So the plan is I am gonna go check out those areas on the northwest part of the lake, which is very swampy and wide open. When I first got out here, I was wondering how deep this water gets. And I've been happy to see that it doesn't get more than about that deep. That's shallow enough for a Bigfoot to walk right through it if it knows the pathways. This is really like some place you'd expect to see a dinosaur. And it's still here on the Texas-Louisiana border. I am on one island amongst many, many in what they call Caddo Lake, which really should be called Caddo Swamp. I don't think the Squatchers would necessarily be on this island, but I think they would pass through or get close enough on their nightly circuit to be able to hear my howls.
been making sounds here, but I'm gonna need to continue doing that to make sure that if a Sasquatch is making a circuit, it hears me as it's passing through this whole area. So I didn't get any action during my solo camping trip, but now I really want to hear from Cliff Bobo and Renee about that south area, because I think it may be a primo spot where Bigfoots could be found right now. Well, am I glad to see you guys. It was a couple of cold, wet nights out there. Oh yeah, the weather's finally broke. So what did you guys come up with? All three of us went and talked to Ben. He definitely saw one. He got a good look at it. His property is amazing, too. And while we are at Ben's property, I met his nephew, Danny. He has a boat, but he offered to take us out in his boat overnight and do some scanning with thermals. Fantastic. So you mean we can go down here on boat, and then we can have a team on the land and one on the water. Right, making calls back and forth to one another. All right. Well, let's get to him, then. Let's do it. Good. Bobo has hooked us up with Danny DuPont. He's the nephew of Ben DuPont, our witness. This is a nice little boat we got, man. Oh, yeah. It's got a roof, the whole nine. He has a pontoon boat that we're going to deck out like a FLIR command center. We're going to have a number of thermal imagers looking at the shoreline as we slowly drift down this bayou in the dead of night. We're going to do that, and hopefully we can elicit some attention by a Sasquatch if one's nearby. Perhaps it'll come out and do a scream. Perhaps it'll just hide there behind a tree. But no matter what, if it comes near the water's edge, we're going to see it with the thermal imagers. So, Danny, you mentioned that you've had reports from the family going back 85 years. 1929. What was that? Uh, my grandfather seen him in a pear orchard. Really? Yes, sir. What was it doing? Reaching in a tree and eating the pears. Really? Yes, sir. He was about 10 years old. He said he snuck up within about 50 yards from him, and it took all running. That was the first sighting. It was normal. That was uh, they, They'd seen it regular. They called them wild men back then, and they wasn't Bigfoot back then. Awesome. So that wasn't unusual. No, no, no. That's That happens all the time on the bayou. We have the boat all hooked up with therms and monitors, and it's ready to go. And as we wait for night to fall, the four of us are going to travel deep into 12 Mile Bayou. Once we get to our spot, Bobo and Cliff will monitor the therms on the boat, while Renee and I will go on shore off in the woods. We'll be making knocks and howls to get the attention of any Bigfoots that may be making their way through this area. <laughs> 